Hi there. So on today's tutorial, we will be covering how to do um, top-down, like the UI for the top-down game. So right by me, join with me today is my cat. Kitty, say hi. Oh, you're not going to make any noises? No? Okay, then. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, my cat's sitting right by my PC, being very needy. Anyway, in yesterday's tutorial, like in, la in last week's tutorial, I guess it was, it was probably last week that I uploaded it. But in the last tutorial, we went ahead and made top-down movement. And it looks something like this. Of course, I have a new scene here. It's called the test scene, and I'm in a different project, but it's the exact same code. Don't worry. But without, um, I'm, I'm not going to mess around. Because last time I recorded this, it was like a 20-minute video for what is essentially a 10-minute job, like a 5-minute job. So let's run over real quick. We're going to go to UNC user interface widget and we're going to call it ui underscore hud so that says i'm full hud there must have been some weird noise in my in, in my in my video my house is some pretty noisy half the time in the afternoon so there's that anyway um just a quick thing if you guys find my ui to be weird it's coming from me being a unity, like starting off as a unity developer. Um, don't hit the, like, let's, let's try not to judge too much. So anyway, we have our HUD and we have this. So you could um, do this in whatever way you want. You could just drag a progress by in and say, hey, like the, the, main, play, the main thing we're going to be using is a progress bar. I can drop that in. So you could use a progress bar and be done with it. That's really all. You don't you don't need to go to go to the extra steps I'm doing, but for me, I'm gonna go ahead and create a vertical box. I'm just gonna drag it in. Now the vertical box in the hierarchy, I'm gonna go ahead and drag my progress binder. And on top of that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a text box. Just drag that in. The text box, I'm going to try to put it into my vertical box. As you can see, it automatically organizes itself. In Unity, we have something similar. It's called a, um, it is called a grid layout for those of you who are interested in Unity. But this is just the exact same thing. Say, duplicate the history button, go ahead and create, it organizes it to the whole thing. So anyway, back to, back to, back to Unreal. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and resize this to the way we want. Make sure the anchor is set to your top right, so then that we set there, meaning that when the screen scale changes, this would still be stuck in relative to the same place. This has its downsides, but I'd say for most of the time it's not really that big of an issue. We can go ahead and center this by resetting the values here. I'm not going to mess with the size, and then right after that, I'm just going to offset it just by a little bit to my liking. And here you can, of course, um, go ahead and do fill. That fills up the bottom of the screen. You can go ahead and into text, um, center, horizontal line, set a vertical line over here. Honestly, this is just a fluff. You don't really do any of this. I like to do it though, because um, I want my UI to look really cool. So under details, I'm going to call this uh, health value progress, I call it. Press bar. All right, so now that we have that, we compile, save. Next thing we're going to do is just hop into the player character. Like, as you can see, well, just to show you, this won't appear in the game quite yet. So, yeah, you have that. So we have that as an issue. So we're going to hop into the game, like hop into the top-down character blueprint, and we're going to go ahead and um, make a little I'm going to delete these because um, we don't need these yet. I did this. I recorded this video twice now. This is actually the third time recording this because the first two times did not come out right. My cat came in the middle of my recording and um, really screwed up my recording session. Didn't you, Kitty? Yeah, anyway. Damn it. It's, it's all right, Kitty. I, yeah, adorable, so you get a free pass. Anyway, so over here, I'm just going to go ahead and hit, um, which was, yes, all right, okay, so. What we're going to do is we want to make the widget show up on the viewport. So we're going to go ahead and right click and say um, event begin play. So essentially think of this as a start in um, C sharp. 
and it's the start function start method errors method of function i think are the same as if i remember my uh, second year university object oriented programming lectures functions and the methods are, are considered the same on c sharp at least anyway we're going to go ahead and right click this and drag this out and then say um get to get widgets. Get widget. Choose somewhere here. Yeah, no, so cre it's create widget, not get widget, but you, you create a widget. Go ahead and define what widget class you're going to be using. So when you right click this, like when you click this, it gives you your, uh, a drop down, just click that, and yeah, we're, we're cool with that. Next thing is we're going to go ahead and yeah, grab the return value drag it out and select promote to variable and I'm going to call it the HUD reference HUD underscore ref so once we have the reference to our HUD right I'm just going to go ahead and say add to viewport and that creates a and that drags in the HUD reference and you know save Save and pass save. And when you play, where is my window? Drag it in, pass save, and then when we play, you see that our health bar is right down that top corner. It's pretty small, but you know, we can edit, we can make we can make it work. Okay. Now that we have our HUD, we don't we do, we need values in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this. I'm gonna pull it and shift actually. Let's make this a tad bit bigger, you know. Make this a big screen, and if I help by help by, it's pretty small. That's just sad. So I'm just gonna go and drag that out, make it big. Um, text uh, one, and I'm gonna go and make the font size 32. And we have a help value there. Anyway, so now. We have a health bar which doesn't have. Like, you know, we have a health bar that doesn't show health. See, that's an issue. So now, so now we're going to so we're going to fix that, right? So first thing is we're going to hop into the top-down controller and create a new variable. Two new variables actually. We can call one. Um, current current health. Make sure that that value is a float. And we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that control W and call it max health. Max health. Now we have those values, right? But you know we don't have we don't have them as set as a default. So let's say max health is a hundred. And here's something I like to do: dragging current health set value. And instead of defining, hey, current health should start off at a hundred. Can go ahead and set it as set it at hundred. So can go ahead and um, pull this out and plug this in here at the start. Can drop in max health. We get we get the value. Drag that in. Compile, save, and we should have it as a hundred. And this still won't appear in the game. Like you just have that text block, but we're gonna fix that. So now let's get to the fun part. We're gonna hop into the UI, the UI HUD value, and we're gonna hop into our text. No, let's go to our health bar first, right? And you notice that the percent, the percentage is what fills out our help bar. So you can bind that and create a new binding. And this new binding will have this cool thing that's fine, but you know, not what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start making the help bar update itself. My cat is so needy. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and grab drag this. Drag this um or like this link this pin out and that I may say um, cast to plus top down character. Cast to top down character. 
once you have that, we need, we need a reference. We need, we need, we need the health value. So drag this out from the object and say get um, play a character. Get play a character. Now we have the play character. Now we need the values. Now this is it's, this this bit's really simple. Honestly, we go ahead and see as top down character. We drag it out and say get max. Hell, get current health. Leave this to there. Drag this out just a little bit. Let me say float divided by float. So current health float by float. Ta-da! So current health divided by max health. We get a value from that. And that value, for example, so I have my, I had my, I don't have my calculator open, but say you divide 50 by 100, the value you get is 0.5. So that is your point, that, that is the point, that is the percentage value we need to pop in here, which is from a scale of 0 to 1. Well, if you divide 0 by 100, it's 0. And if you divide 100 by 100, it's 1. So, you know, some quick back. Anyway, paste that, save that, and ta-da, you have a uh, health value. So when we start, our health bar will be 100%. It will be maxed out. So we had um, this little guy over here, and it's supposed to display the amount of health as a number on the player. So I'm going to fix that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and down, click bind, create binding. Under, the, under that, we just going to drag this out. Um, compile, save, drag this in, cast to um, top down character. We have that. Same as before, just drag this out. Get player character. And here, we don't need to do too much. Just get get current health. And so you may notice that this over here is has a return value of text. This this output value will be a float. We the float does not equal text. So float is not a string. So you can still drag that in and it just gets converted. Just they just saying that it's so it's, it's that is super cool. Like um yeah, float float to a string. String to a float would be incredibly annoying, but float to a string, yeah, it's pretty easy. And if you save, ta-da, play up. So when you start, it's 100%. Now, you can actually stop off here if you like. Since we've done with since we've done with the um, UI having it like UI, and you can very well, we can very well stop here and go to another. You can go into another tutorial or go to the next part of the tutorial if it's up. But for me. We don't we make sure that the health bar works so that it actually works. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something real quick. See this says ouch, what was that for kitty? Why did you bite me? You, know, you set current health, drag it out. Right. Anyway. <sighs> so you can go ahead and say input double. So it shows you um, and put R like I want the damage to come from the R key, so we press a pressed. Oh. Drag this out. Actually, you know what? Let's have some. Let's have. Let's have some basic um conditions. Uh, hold B, click. You get a branch, or you can just right click, right click, and say branch. You'll get that, but I don't need it. So I'm just gonna drag that. The condition would be no. So the condition would be get current health. Get it. Drag it out. Um, greater or oh, greater than zero. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, greater than or equal to zero. That's fine. Actually, no. 
c equal to float so equals to a float so if it's zero the condition is true so if say so if the current health is equal to is equal to zero we get a true value so if it's a if it's true we say print string No, I don't. Please stop. He's already dead. Yes, Simpsons reference. I don't watch Simpsons. <laughs> anyway, now this like this would be triggered whenever our health is equal to zero. So inversely, we conversely inversely. I don't quite know what appropriate word I should use there. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag out the false. Say set player actually no take just drag current health in set plug this in just do that float minus float minus float see hmm. just drag this in as the current float minus 10. So, save. This just this is just a debug. There's something you can use for debug. But when you press R now, he takes damage. Hit zero. Please stop. He's already dead. No, please stop. He's dead. So yeah, that's like this. That's just to show that you actually take damage from the thing. But if like this, the, I I I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out, calling it debug stuff. Because why not? And you find the color as red because nothing screams debug than red. Try this out here, and there we go. Um, I hope this tutorial actually did help. Uh, because well, I'm the, I'm recording this tutorial as I make my own little game. So, hopefully, both of us, you and I, you and I, me, the the developer slash like make of the tutorial and you the viewer of the tutorial we can get along and we can and you can learn something from me i can learn something from you you know uh, a give and take relationship but you know if you did get something out of this tutorial could i interrupt you and ask you to do um, one small thing for me could you by any chance and hit like subscribe and comment i guess i I, I'm not too sure about how other YouTubers do this kind of stuff, but honestly, it really does help and it kind of keep me motivated. You know, the like people saying, "Hey, I like your tutorial. I keep I keep it up." It's motivating. So, you know, if you could a like, comment, and subscription would be very much appreciated. So, with that being said, thank you for watching. Peace out. I'm out. Bye bye.